everybody would be celebrating Dable if he goes for two and doesn't make it. Because I think the only reason everybody's saying, what a great guy, you get a wheelbarrow, oh. and so he could carry his cubes around. I mean, if he didn't make it, we'd be ripping him. Why would you do that? <sighs> Just take the tie? Because a field goal is still beating you even with a one-point lead, right? If yeah. the guy doesn't go wide right, well, what you're doing is left. You're, you're telling your defense, play for the win rather than the tie. Right. So if they kick the extra point at 20 20, you're, you're telling your defense, give us an opportunity to take it to overtime. That's what you're asking them to do. With a minute, six seconds, and a timeout, Tennessee's going to use it all to try to kick the field goal. And if you win, in theory, now you go to overtime where you could still lose. So I, I get the logic. I'm sure he would have gotten killed for it. But before we start talking about the wheelbarrow and all that, it's all analytics. The analytics probably told them going for two in that spot gives you the better chance to win, and it does. Because when the Giants scored the touchdown, I'm thinking, Tennessee's still going to win this game. Peter, we talked about it all hey, summer all long. Summer. Yes. A minute, six seconds no. at a timeout, even for Tannehill and a Tennessee offense that's a bit dysfunctional outside of Henry. Even if the Giants' defense was it, better than the Giants' defense, I would have thought it, they'd get in the field you, goal you range. Figure, I'm just thinking, hopefully, they get a turnover. Right. You know, hopefully, there's some kind of, like, obnoxiously long field goal that they miss. That That's my best-case scenario. So, the odds are running in favor of them getting the game-winning field goal. So the the hope is is to at least let the defense play for the win instead of having to play for the possibility of overtime. And they caught a break. He misses the 47-yard field goal. Now he's being celebrated. But, Michael, I'm excited because it was just last year I had a head coach taking a knee at their own 10. Right. You know, so uh, whether it's analytically driven, whether it's, uh, you know, all – what we were told, the wheelbarrow, all cubes, whatever. The fact is, that's a game the Giants would have lost the last five years. And have. And have lost. In, in, in The way the G Tennessee lost is the way the Giants have lost the games that they were competitive in. And now to be competitive, fight back from 13 nothing down, you just feel like things are a lot different than they were. It's only one game. I'm not going to buy into, oh, there's no Dak in Dallas, and they can beat Carolina, and this is a winnable division. I just want to know, do I have a coach? And it looks like I've got a coach. I don't, I'm still not sure about the quarterback, but I know that I, I've got a coach See, that me, gets his team to play. Let me stop you there, though. I mean, I like Dable. I, I mean, mm -hmm. just from, you know, just surface, he looks like he looks like a football coach, acts yeah. like a football coach, mm -hmm. and looks like he gets his team to play for Do we really know if he's a good coach? I mean, I had Joe, Joe Judge go, going to Canton after a while. So, I mean, we don't know after one game whether or not this guy is a good coach. We have no, no idea. Well, of, course, of course, it's always a constant evaluation, Michael. But all I know is, is that whether it was the second year of Mac do whether it was you know the years of Shermer or Judge, they, they lose that game and they probably get blown out. Again, there's a lot wrong with this team. Mm -hmm. As I said, they didn't have a play uh, in Tennessee territory the entire first half. You know, Daniel Jones still Jones it out there, throwing that awful pick in the red oh, zone that's, that's, that could have very easily cost the game. But did you see how Dable you know talked I to him after? That. I love it. Holding him accountable? Yeah, I love that. You know, not messing around. Barkley gives us the best chance to win. Give him the ball. Take advantage of it. That's why they went for two, because they knew they had a play that was going to work, because ride Barkley. Let's do it. Let's make things happen here. So I saw an aggressiveness. I saw a wanting to win instead of trying not to lose the game. And then I saw adjustments at the half, and I saw a team that could have very easily mailed it in, like the other teams would have, that came back and fought hard, hung in that game. So even if they had lost the game, Michael, I still would have felt like, Hey, that's a pretty good Tennessee team on the road, and they fought hard, and they gave you a reason to believe, and the fact that they won the game is that much better. The only thing that you really worry about, did you really find out anything about Daniel Jones? Because Daniel Jones is like the little girl with the curl, either really, really good or really, really bad. He never looked never looked off Barkley when he threw the interception. Oh, my God. Was I mean, fun. anybody would have known that's exactly where he was throwing the ball. And I'm glad that Dable aired him out because the nice guy approached with the guy from Duke isn't working. So now maybe just air him out. And he has receipts because he's made Josh Allen into a great quarterback. If you look at Josh Allen in college, he was a 52% pass. 52%. Mm -hmm. And usually when you're a bad passer in college, you don't become a better passer in the pros. He turned him into a better passer. So maybe he's the last chance saloon for Daniel Jones, and Daniel Jones has to listen. Now, Don, are you coming off the uh, your long-held belief that the selection of Barkley was awful after this game? Oh, well, Obviously, well, well, that was the reason they got this guy. This is the goal. Well, I, 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 I got to say, I, did not, I, I, got, I, I thought I was going to get that on social media. 
Uh, I, I did not get that because I think everybody kind of, it is what it is. Yo, thank God they have them. I mean, well, well, it took a while to finally get to this point, but now you've got a coach, you've got an offense that I think is going to go out there and okay. use it. All right, now I've got to stop you, though, because I want I want to play the what-if game. You know we love to play the what-if game. Sure we do. Let's say he has a season like he had yesterday. He finishes with 1,900 yards. He's just unbelievable. You giving him an Ezekiel Elliott contract? No, you're franchising him. You have to. No, you got to franchise him. Okay. And see if he because does But that's year. still a lot of money. A lot yeah, of money, but back. it's still cheaper than a lot of other positions. It's and they're in cap hell, so, I mean, I can't imagine yeah, and, what and you're going to do. Any franchise number, there's there's no, like, deferring it and, and making it go to other years. It's all going to be next year. I just, mm -hmm. just got to say, I mean, Don, Don was uh, with me at Giants camp when I was in full bloom love. Mm-hmm. I, I was so happy for Saquon yesterday. I mean, that, that's just – that's a couple of years, essentially. I mean, don't get me wrong. He was around for a while last year, but th the last two years have been such frustration. And it, he wasn't good yesterday. He was great. Not good. Great. Not good. Great. Not Over good, 160 great. yards, the touchdown, the two-point conversion. Looked awesome. Like, just looked different. His – his. He told us in camp that, like, he feels different from a decision-making standpoint. He's not hesitating. And you saw that yesterday. And though he did have the big 68-yard carry yesterday, that wasn't the whole thing for him. You always talk about that, Michael. Mm -hmm. He'll have one big run and then nothing else. No, he was pretty good throughout the day. No, he was very, very good. It was it was great to see. And, you know, the Giants last year, it was last year. Everything blends together. They lost that awful game to Washington because of the offsides on a field goal. So they lose these games all right. the time. This is the first time they're over 500 since 2016. Yeah. Crazy. Well, there's plenty of times they were in games, Michael. You mentioned the Washington game. I can tell you about the, uh, uh, the, the Tampa Bay game. Remember that? There was always something that they would do to end up losing the game. This was a game. This wasn't the games like where they were dominant, found a way to lose. They found a way to win yesterday. They did. Again, they were not good in the first half. And you take a look at the stats, and this is why it's kind of damning for Jones. Again, Tennessee's got a really good defense that game's on the road. You look at the way he utilized Jones. Jones was more of a weapon running the football than he was passing it. He only threw the ball 21 times. He was 17 to 21 for 188 yards, uh, the touchdown and the pick. So you could see how conservative they were at times because they realized that Barkley was their best chance to win. So despite having some weapons, I think they realize we can't put Jones in a position to beat us because you saw what happened in the red zone. He threw that awful interception. That's an interception rookie's throw. Yeah, it's awful. Not a guy in his fourth year trying to get a contract. So that's ultimately what's going to stop this team. That's why I'm not going to get caught up in they're going to make a run, make the playoffs, because I do think the quarterback's going to hold them back. But now I feel like they've got an offensive coordinator. They've got a head coach that's going to find a way to make it work. And I don't. I wouldn't be surprised now if they are able to stay competitive for that. But ultimately, Michael, I don't think they have their quarterback. Now, Rex Ryan was on with DPH and Rothenberg. He's on every Monday, and that is really a must listen. Sure is. Because he doesn't have an editing valve, which is great. And he said that the Giants have a coach now that changes the way you look at the Giants. Brian Dayball has a guy that the fan base, the Giant fan base, can get behind. And I was so pumped to watch it. And, and the fact he went for two, I, I never liked it. I freaking loved it. They could have easily lost that game. You know, the guy makes the field goal. But the, the fact they won it is great. It's icing on the cake. But just the whole energy around that, or synergy, if you will, around that football team is completely different. Now, both of you uh, were mentioned on social media by Dan Orlovsky because I think Dan really took uh, offense to the fact that you guys did not agree with him that the Giants were going to go down to Tennessee and win and he pointed it out after the game was over. Yeah, listen, I, I thought it was, I didn't understand what he was thinking. I really did. I and, and I'm I give him all the credit in the world. I also give myself credit because at halftime I was ready to call Orlovsky out on Twitter. Oh, I'm I glad you off. held off. Thank, yeah, I decided to say, you know what, let's let's see the second half play out. <laughs> but no, good for Orlovsky for owning it. I'm happy that he cares about what he comes on and says. Yeah, on show. I love it. I'll keep receipts. I, I, I'm a, I'm still shocked by it. Although I didn't I I didn't use it on our picks, but I did in in the um, the cover five. I did pick the Giants. Really? Yeah. Now speaking of our picks. Well, six 